she she don't want she don't want to kiss me. She don't want to do this. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, you gave birth. It's time to get back into the relationship. He texts her and said, "I told you there was gonna be a time that was gonna come that I was gonna like have to cut you off and be back 100% committed to Keisha." He's talking about he gave her a plan B. He shows me the evidence of a plan B. My best friend says, "No, this is not the right time. Wait, don't let her come over with the baby. You need to get your stuff together. You just found this out." And that's when this damn pamphlet come out. Because Jeremy said, "Look, Ashley, I told you there was gonna come a point where I was not gonna go with my girl no more." And the truth will come out. Like even threats of violence. She was already pregnant with the the revenge baby. Now in the previous four episodes, I have given you the whole timeline of events that happened between Keisha Kaylee, Britt, Hazel, Jeremy, and Ashley. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about when everything escalated and goes off. We're gonna be talking about Paris Harley and how she's involved in some of the inconsistencies on her side. Out of her channel and to taking the video down with. We're going to be exposing the lies that were in the reckoning. My problem with Miss Ma'am was the control. We're also going to be talking about the inconsistency in Keisha Kaylee's book and how there is two versions of her book and many more trust me you don't want to miss out i suggest not just leaving this video to play but to actually sit and watch because there's going to be some receipts on the screen that you're going to need to see make sure to hit the subscribe button on the notification smash that like button this video took ages and let's get straight into this drama after this disclaimer please do not harass any of the individuals that will be mentioned in this series now some people have apologized for some of the involvement they've had in this drama so again do not harass any of these individuals or their children now Hazel ends up making a video talking about how this was her last hurrah. She says she's been giving too much energy into the situation and she felt like she was doing so much checking people every day when it came to Ashley in August. She also then accuses Jeremy and Keisha for being mentally ill. Especially when the individual involved, two people that are the root of this issue are mentally ill. You cannot do anything about that. So me, I cannot continue to give my energy my energy will be given to my godson. My energy will be given to my best friend. That is it. There's no way I can get on this platform and continue to be fake. I don't know how to do it. So because I have been speaking and speaking and speaking, it almost comes off like I'm speaking for her because it's a lot of things that have been said and it's a lot of things that have not been said from her part. That's how she is. She has to speak when she feels like she wants to speak, but that's not how I am. I'll stand in front of you and fight the battle for you. That's the type of friend that I am. Like, oh, no, 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 you you stay right there. I got it. Let me say something to her. Like, that's how I am. So that has been weighing on me. Also in the video, she questions if she was making the situation worse because Ashley, at the end of the day, still has to co-parent with Jeremy. Essentially, do I feel like I'm making the situation worse? Mm, realize that shit and punch the dog shit out your ass. She was already pregnant with the, the revenge baby. Not that she looks slow. I think she is slow. She can't believe her daughter just as dumb as she is. Right, Paris? The whole family is messed up. I feel like it's two sides to that. Like, what what's worse? Worse in this case is relative. Like, it just depends on how you're looking at it. Everybody's perspective of the situation is different. And I'm sure we can all agree she definitely added fuel to the fire. She was very messy in the situation. It was all fun and games because it's entertainment for y'all. But this shit is a real situation for me. Bitches really will get slapped. Not long after, she then ends up going back on the internet and I can only assume to defend her friend. Even though she said she wasn't going to speak on the situation anymore. So her and Ashley decided to have an interview with Paris. So before we move on to the next chapter, we have to talk about Paris and how she is tied and involved in this drama. I'm so sorry, you're not important enough for Martin Lewis to talk about you. It's not what you want, it's what you get, sweetie. You don't get Martin Lewis, you get me. <laughs> Now, from the looks of things, Paris was a fan. She was a huge supporter of Keisha. She used to watch her 
years back and she she's one of the reasons why she started making videos like i said i used to be a supporter of hers back in the days she was one of the main reasons i started youtube since 2017 she even sent a tweet to Malibu Dollface. Man, I never thought I'd be bringing up Malibu Dollface back on this channel. And apparently she started having issues with Keisha around four years ago after she made a video talking about Jeremy. Around this time, a lot of people did not like Jeremy, was warning Keisha, and I don't know if it's because he's from the hood, if it's because he's light skin and she dark skin. I don't know why they felt but obviously they felt something because something ended up happening, right? But they felt that <laughs> Jeremy wasn't good for Keisha. Um, so let's get into it. This is what I said three years ago. Eve, she is sometimes. She's so naive and she's so trusting and she's so gullible. It's like almost like you're watching a suspense horror show. She loves the people that just piggyback off every decision she makes and gives her thumbs up and positivity, as she wants to call it. And when people are on her channel and they don't like the stuff that she's doing, that's called being negative. I'm a hater. No, I mean, I think that's called uh, trying to let your ass know because obviously you don't know. There's a new snake in Keisha's life that she is not catching on to the hints and the signs. And that new snake is that guy she's with. I don't respect anymore. Cause she gives me anxiety. You can tell she's such a sweet, genuine person, naturally, and that's probably why her feelings are always. That's why she's always getting taken advantage of. Because I obviously don't want to see anything bad happen to this girl. She doesn't deserve it. Now, according to Paris's sister, this girl literally tried to bully my sister out of her channel and to taking the video down. Which, if you go back to the previous video. If anybody saw that video from years ago, Paris was really nice about it. It wasn't anything like the video, you know, where you came for her neck now. So the narrative is, is that Keisha is trying to bully her out of her channel and into taking her video down. Paris never corrected her sister when she said that, which makes me think that she believes or is running with the narrative that that happened. I want to know where the passion comes from. Yes, whatever happened would happen, that's fine. But where the passion came from is me knowing that my channel was bullied to take my stuff down. And party because Keisha tried to get her channel taken down. Now, Paris never corrected her, which led people into thinking that Keisha did try to take Paris's channel down. Now, there is no receipts or evidence out there of Paris herself saying, yeah, Keisha tried to take my channel down but it seems like paris is running with the narrative that keisha tried to bully her into taking her channel down and all she did was leave a comment you said that your problem with me is that i removed your video no it was on that video when i posted it three years ago there was a comment left by you and then when the people saw your comment under the video they came under the video and that is what happened they came on the video attacking me and i had i would have a class of subscribers at the time it was like super low and i had like hundreds of dislikes i had like 10 likes at that time learning the analytics i'm thinking this could kill my channel i literally only have 500 subscribers let me practice this video because this isn't even a negative video and i'm getting all this backlash because she came over here and had a problem with me just having an opinion over nothing that's what it was so I didn't remove the video. All I did was comment under the video. When you left a comment under the video, all of your words you came under the video attacked me. Are you sure I it was me commenting? I don't even really comment under videos. That is totally different to what her sister said. So she clearly has not been honest about what has been happening about Keisha trying to bully her off her channel or try to get her video removed because if that wasn't the case, she would have corrected her sister. And she also wouldn't have not mentioned it in the other live. She literally left a comment which Paris just happens to not have a screenshot of. And she did take screenshots before she even mentions it here. Comments when I unprivated it, the screen is private. The comments aren't there. When I unprivated it, all the comments aren't there. Even comments that I have screenshotted from before, some of them aren't there anymore. So you're telling me you took screenshots before, but you didn't take a screenshot of. Keisha's comment that she left on your video. That just sounds sus to me, and it makes it seem like she's not being honest here. Anyway, after Brit made her video, this is when Paris came back on the topic of Keisha. 
And she made video after video after video after video. It does seem very obsessive when you have long videos as well. It's not like they're short. Me, I'm like, as a drama channel, I'm like, she would have done so well if she branched out into other sectors in that YouTube drama community. She was so fixed on Keisha to the point that it does seem like an obsession, you know? And again, Paris was a fan. So it doesn't surprise me that she would make a lot of videos on Keisha, someone that she admired, looked up to, and then all these things come out. Now she feels some type of way. She is emotionally invested into hating Keisha from the looks of it. So, you know, just like Keisha going to be brilliant, I guess Ashley decided to go to Paris. Going to Paris, though, I don't think is the best decision, knowing the history, the background, just the the mess of it all, it, it, it does not look good at all. Especially considering that Paris is definitely leaning more towards one side. I don't think she is 100 completely fair when it comes to uh, drama, when it comes to Keisha. And keep her hands clean. She was just popping all that shit in her video, right? But how her hands are so clean, she never did nothing to nobody. She don't have nothing to apologize for it. Well, girl, the narrative ends tonight. Like I told you, Hurricane Ashley was coming for that ass. I hope you had a shelter and a bunker to get into, bitch. Now, during this interview, Hazel makes up a whole lie and says that Keisha was trying to be August's mother. To set up meetings with August, trying to like be his mother. You know, it was just real false. At the end of the day, Hazel is entitled to her opinion, but what she's not entitled to is facts. And let's have a look at the facts. The fact is Ashley wanted August to have a bond with Keisha. It was, the proof is there. The receipts are there. The evidence is there. There is nothing to show that she's trying to be August's mom or control the kid. She's basically trying to keep Ashley happy, listening to what Ashley wants or what Ashley suggests. There was one time when Keisha said, hey, he's more than welcome to come over. And then there was a time that she was helping Jeremy. I know Jeremy said he wanted all of the kids together. He said he wanted all the kids together when we were able to come home. Did you feel comfortable dropping him off to spend a few days with us? Or what do you think? There's no demand. It's like, hey, what do you think? What's comfortable with you? It's what, this is what Jeremy wants, etc. Now let's dive into the fake accounts which was brought up in this interview contacted you through other channels versus other than her main number or her main account? Yes, she contacted me from a separate number the other day after she made her video telling me about some attorneys are going to be reaching me and she made sure she signed it at the end. Your hands are only clean, bitch, because you like to do stuff underhanded and shady. So we have the proof here that she's contacted Ashley talking as herself through another fake account because she didn't want screenshot coming from the Keisha Anderson profile. So it leads me to believe that when you guys went and did the investigation on the Bumblebee account, they had a lot of nasty foul ass to say, calling her a prostitute and all types of stuff. That it, it's very much looking very likely that this could have been her account because she does get on fake accounts and do like this. The same type of that this bitch has been trying to put the narrative on her own platform because she likes to talk just like that. And in comments under her update video that she could have kept she said the same verbiage about oh he doesn't have to show receipts he's gonna go take it to the court everybody believes what they want to believe about the situation but one thing i want to be able to say for a fact i never sat back and i never harassed nobody i didn't create no fake accounts and when i reached out it was always through my phone number or my business number those few short times within those many months i never did i never harassed nobody now, some people have sent me receipts through the DMs, and now I get to finally share some of the stuff that you guys have sent me now that we're up to this part. So, one of the proof that Keisha has a fake account is this. This proves that Keisha has a fake account. Now, I wasn't able to find the video, but I eventually did. This isn't a fake account. Now, the person found this on Lipstick Alley, so we... <sighs> <laughs> Lipstick Alley, not really credible, but this is it. <laughs> this is her kid's account. This is when the girls were in Jamboree. And look what this person says. Under under the Jamboree page. Hold on. We gotta focus, y'all. 
These children are truly a miracle. They were born to a transgender using a loner uterus. The mother, Keisha Kaylee, starved these poor children in utero, and even today, they are underweight and not hitting milestones. She's a neglectful mama. It's so, the person under, it's so sad that they are eight months and can't even hold their bottles or even sit up. They can't even straighten their fingers out. I believe that because their mom had the eating disorder and didn't handle it properly before they were born, it caused them to be born three months early. Now, another thing that people are saying is that, well, Keisha does have fake accounts because she messaged her neighbor. It had to be her, Martin, even though I showed you guys all the evidence how they were talking about this neighbor as soon as Jeremy followed her. We now have more proof. Not knowing what the hell's going on because some people they don't know about what the trolls do. So she's over here like, maybe it could have been her. I don't know, blah, 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 blah. And then we had a meet up in the middle. Luckily, at that very time we met up, there were people messaging her. Once again, obviously it couldn't have been me because I'm right in front of her face. There were people calling my business phone, saying crazy stuff. And we just like looking at each other, like sharing, like, look at this, look at this. Like, she's like, oh my gosh, this is so weird. And the icing on the cake was that we were talking to the manager of the building and the manager, my management was like, look, let me tell you, girl, he should got some crazy followers. They be messaging us, they be saying some crazy stuff. And so my neighbor was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, I just, I really thought it probably could have been you. I didn't know what was going on. If Keisha was lying, you know damn well the neighbor would have not put up with that. She would have either got Keisha kicked out of the damn apartments or she would have said something publicly. Now the reason why I know for a certain this is true and that the neighbor actually saw the, the morons actually trying to pretend to be Keisha. Obviously it couldn't have been me because I'm right in front of her face. Is because one of you guys tried to start some shit, went over to her page and she responded basically telling you to leave her and Keisha alone. Because she knows firsthand now, after that experience that Keisha mentioned, that this ish is real. That this ish is, oh wow, this really isn't Keisha. This is you guys starting drama, causing chaos in someone's life and trying to cause some type of harm to this person. Now, what is very interesting is this Bumblebee account. So, what happened is when people went onto Instagram and tried to log into the account, you can basically, I don't know if you can do it anymore, but you can basically say you lost your password and that you want your e your password or you need to reset your password and resend an email to you, whatever, right? And then Instagram actually shows you the email, but it covers a few letters, but first letter and the last number or letter you see. Well, a lot of people were saying this, but none of them had any evidence whatsoever. But this YouTuber actually had video recording. And as you can see, this is, this is a similar email to Keisha. And just to elaborate for some other people that may not understand, as you can see, there's an A and a 7 in the email box on Instagram, right? Now, you see those little stars between the A and the 7? That represents how many either numbers or letters you have between the start of your email and at the back of your email. And just like Keisha's, it is six. And it just happens to also be a Gmail as well. So this is why people are saying that this is Keisha's Instagram account. It is very easy to make another email ending with this, starting with that, and then say, it's Keisha, right? But Keisha ends up putting herself in a hole. This is what she did in one of her videos. Two, and then it shows like the first four letters of the email or whatever. People are making emails with those first four letters and ending it however else different. And I found out one of the emails, because like I said, I was handling it legally. So Instagram released one of the accounts to my attorney. And I was literally on the ground kicking like a little child when I saw the email they came up with, cause y'all know what my email is, Keisha 7 my business email. And like, so the first four letters would be still my first four letters. And then they will screenshot the page and say, aha, it's Keisha behind this page. Aha, like you're full of shit. Like, no, that's not me. Like people have literally went through great lengths to try to pretend. Now when I ask Keisha, okay Keisha, let me see this email, let me see receipts, proof, she don't have it. She can't access it. She can't, she can't get it. This is such crucial evidence. Why not take a damn screenshot? This is something you should have because this, 
this is something that if someone accused me of having a fake account, you know damn well I'm not just going to sit there and say it. I'm going to take a screenshot and show you guys, just like she did with the other stuff. So now she had put herself in a hole. Yes, of course, it's her word against these other people. Because at the end of the day, this is not credible evidence. I can grab your email and do the same thing and then start harassing people um, using the same slang, same words that you use, the same type of spelling you use that people make fun of in Lipstick Alley and then say, oh my God, look, it's her, it's him. Does that mean it's gonna be you? Exactly, it's not credible. That's why it's your word against her word. Of course, you're gonna have people that are going to say it's hers, but then you're gonna have the other people that are like, well, she's been accused so many times. How do we know this isn't another plot that these guys are doing behind the scenes as they always have done? And yeah, you are right, it could be because these people do take things to the next level. And I did also check if a lawyer could even get that information from Instagram. And because it was legally handled, it makes sense of why she actually didn't show that screenshot in that video when she spoke about it. And since we're on the topic of troll accounts and Keisha sending trolls to harass Ashley, etc., let me quickly get into this regarding Brilliant Brie because apparently she has proof. Brilliant Brie really implied that there were trolls giving her the similar information that Keisha have given her, right? When I was messaging her. But when I asked her for like proof, she didn't want to get involved, y'all. But she had no problem going to Paris and giving information and showing Paris what I sent her, the voice messages, etc. She had no problem doing that, but she didn't want to get involved. Okay, Brilliant V, you don't want to get involved, but you wanted to get involved by giving... It, it's a contradiction. Do you understand that? I'm just saying, if I had proof that Keisha, solid proof, not some fake ish, but solid proof that these trolls accounts were messaging me ish that Keisha was sending me, then yeah, give me that. I want to see that. Yeah, let me add that. Like, Brilliant Brie has been saying all this stuff, but not providing proof. The only thing that she did provide was a screenshot to, to Paris Harley. And as you can see here, it says it was a close friend. It didn't say who it was a close friend to. It didn't say if it was a close friend to Keisha, nor did it say if it was a close friend to Jeremy. And... Keisha said that she never sent this video to anyone else. So, who else had that video to send it to Brilliant Brie? Jeremy had that video. Jeremy sent it to Keisha, right? Who else did Jeremy send it to? And the fact that they mentioned gifts, it makes me think, is this someone that Jeremy knows? Because we all know, according to Ashley, that Jeremy loves showing off his son. Did Jeremy show off his family to one of his really close friends or maybe even a family member? If I have proof of something and I said something, I'm going to show you guys, especially as a page that was doing that type of commentary and that type of content. I just feel like when content writers run away from sh that they got themselves into is very important to really clarify. Now the whole thing is a hot mess when you have people that are talking out of their mouth and not showing proof and then you have all these weird things going on, people making accusations. It's like, who do you believe at this point? You know, maybe some comments that I have said in the past maybe didn't help a situation, but I never spoke ill on anybody and I'm not going to start. I don't have to do that. I don't have to chip away at somebody else's crown to make mine any higher or any taller. Mine's going to be on my head regardless. No one asked for the book or the Q&A. At but all. People, and they're requesting my side of the piece. Like, so I'm confused. Like, you're handing out things that people didn't ask for versus they're requesting this from me and asking me. I disagree. You know damn well people are going to have questions when they find out that there's another girl in the video or there's another child running in that video or Jeremy's holding this baby boy, what's going on? You know damn well people would go on about it, people make speculations on Lipstick Alley, people would do the most. This is such bullshit. You know damn well people are gonna ask questions, just like how they've been asking you questions. 
I just feel like she doesn't know quite exactly what I'm going to say and how I'm going to say it and how that's going to affect her image because that's clearly all she cares about. So um, I think that that's why she continues to try to play these mind games and tries to try to jab at me however she can from whatever side she can. Ashley makes another accusation, but again, she has no evidence. It's like little jabs here, little jabs there, and there's never solid proof to back up what she's saying did someone like did lipstick alley tell you that these little trolls did they run and tell you that and you believed them like before or did someone give you solid proof like how do you know and is there receipts it's just ashley keeps saying these things but is never having evidence to prove what she says yeah there's been times where she would contact me and it was bitches like you and hoes like this like you know i didn't keep those those messages just because i'm one of those people that i would read something over and over and over and to the point where it's gonna make me want to fight so for me you know i would just kind of like uh, that was cute honey you're obviously bothered so that's fine and i would just let her have. Now, Ashley never clarified when this happened, so this leaves room for speculation and assumptions from a lot of people, assuming that, wow, when so when after you spoke to Keisha, she just treated you like a dog and cast you know, run with the most things instead of using common sense and questioning things. So, from my understanding, from the timeline, and from what you guys have seen, Keisha has gone in on Ashley. The first time when Keisha found out about Ashley, her best friend was talking about it in her video. You know, I'm talking shit because she mad. You know how any woman would. Bitch, I'm pregnant, da 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 But when she says it, yeah, she cussed at me, blah, blah, blah. She never clarifies when. This is so messy. It leaves room for more assumption and speculation. Okay, so let's go to the revenge baby. Now, this was really crazy to talk about, knowing that this child one day can grow up and see that. It's like, damn. If you're gonna say it, at least have evidence to back it up. At least have evidence. This is what I wrote down for you. When exactly did Keisha know you were pregnant? And when did she know the sex of your child? Since she claimed she was clueless up until seven months, until she was seven months pregnant, of you being pregnant. Now the phone conversation that I have is like an hour and something long and I don't remember Keisha saying that. So I asked Paris and she said that she had it in the phone conversation which was three hours long. So she said she was gonna skim through it and find it but she never ended up doing it. But this is what I found which is totally different from what Paris said. Not true or not. So then I contacted her and then she told me she was pregnant and then she blocked him. So I didn't know she was really pregnant. He didn't know she was really pregnant. And do you believe with that timeline being in mind that she conceived her child and tried to pretty much win to have a boy if she knew that you were having a boy before how that went? So what, what's, what's the timeline on that? Okay, so we have to go by dates, okay? So on June, Jeremy gets Ashley pregnant, right? Someone asked, you know, the time that I found I was pregnant. So I showed that that was July 25th. Within that same day, of course, I let, you know, the father of my son know that I'm expecting. So then I contacted her from this fake Snapchat account. And she's going on about how he told her his side of the story and that they're going to finally move forward in their relationship and move past this. And she hinted at possible pregnancies. And that's when I let her know respectfully, I'm expecting. And I left it at that. August 3rd, 2019, she knew I was pregnant. And then she told me she was pregnant and then she blocked him. Then on August, a doctor confirmed that she was going to have a baby and she checked Jeremy. My gender reveal was what, two days after my birthday? Yeah, because my birthday is October 24th. Once the gender reveal happened, people kept asking me, do you mind if we post? So that's when kind of everybody found out I was having a boy and that I was pregnant. It was big news to everybody. And shortly after my gender reveal, I met up with him face to face so that we could talk. And I was like, you know, just kind of, as we're talking, I kind of threw it in like, you know, oh, by the way, I'm having a boy. His response was, we know. While Keisha was on a cruise. And you, we talked. You apologize, said sorry, you wanted to do the right thing, you're gonna get the test, cool. Then after the cruise, Jeremy and Keisha got intimate and she accidentally gets pregnant and conceives her third child. So people speculated that Jory was a revenge baby and due to some of the things that was written in the book, it gave them more ammo 
to believe so. So let's go through it. The way my heart dropped so fast, I couldn't believe the news I was hearing. Unfortunately, the pregnant female whispered this pregnancy news to me a few days into her conception, in which Jeremy assured me that wasn't true. They both thought that... We didn't hear from Ashley again. So I didn't know she was really pregnant. He didn't know she was really pregnant. It was just a really big mess, to be honest. It was just a big mess. For another woman to initially give me this news was a stab in the hat, but after months of no answers. Okay, first of all, let's go into months of no answers. Okay, so as you can see here, it's August. August, they were talking. Keisha knew. They went back and forth, Jeremy and her. She did block Jeremy. Anything that I have to say, we're not coming to an agreement. We're not having a conversation. It's more so you talking to me. And I just wasn't okay with that. So after a while, I, I got tired of hearing it. I blocked him. And then October comes, the gender reveal. And then apparently it was after the gender reveal. Apparently it was in November. They were communicating August, September, October, November. I hadn't even said anything to her. There was nothing to say. That isn't months of no communication. And then it says of no answers, which is true. They didn't have no answers. They didn't have no test results. Keisha spoke to Ashley's ex-girlfriend trying to get answers. And she goes, their c communication became non-existent. Ashley blocked me and Jeremy in August. Jeremy contacted Ashley via Snap because she had her fake Snap Aaliyah Carter. He continued to talk to her that way. She finally unblocked him. They were communicating August, September, October, November. We moved on hoping our nightmare wouldn't come into fruition. So she had just reached out to him to let him know that she was in her third trimester. Okay, so as you can see here, the 9th of August, so that's her first trimester. So the second trimester, according to Google, would be up to the first trimester takes place from conception through 14 weeks. So if that's eight, then that will be nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Boom. Now she's up to trimester two. The second trimester is from week 14 to 28. Okay, so if that's 14, then we've got 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So this will be her second trimester right around here. So December. So the third trimester would have been around December, February would have been around the third trimester, right? According to these weeks, etc. Which means that Keisha's information is incorrect because they were talking around November. And she said they she just reached out to him to let him know that she was in her third trimester. And that is completely false because we know now by the audios that wasn't the case. Communicating August, September, October, November. Okay, it's Editing Martin here and Plot Twist. So due to these inconsistencies and these little things here and there, people feel that she was trying to cover the fact that she knew that Ashley was having a baby because she herself didn't want people to know that the reason why she got pregnant in November was to purposely try to, I don't know, have a revenge baby and basically have a boy for Jeremy as well. Okay, so this is when it gets a little bit weird, okay? So let me show you what I mean. So someone has sent me some receipt. We had a little conversation, I would say, in the comments and I asked the person to show me proof. And of course, red flag number one, this person has a troll account, like one of those accounts when they use other people's faces. So just like everyone, I, every time someone gives me receipts, I, you know, I try to like, okay, show me screen recording, show me some proof you got this from the book, okay? Or got this receipt from this person's DM. Because guy, people love to lie all the time and give you bull crap, okay? So obviously this is a red flag. So I don't know if this has been edited, okay? But we, apparently there was two versions of the book. But in this instance, this person is saying that, 
unless that person downloaded it from Lipstick Alley or something and the Lipstick Alley version is edited because, you know, people on Lipstick Alley download stuff and put stuff up on there. But let me just quickly get into it. I'm going to put the difference on each side. My fears subsided as each day passed and I felt more confident that this was really going to be different pregnancy until he had to sit me down and confess to me that another girl said she was pregnant too. I had no effing idea what he was talking about. But the way my heart dropped so fast, I couldn't believe the news I was hearing. She, how could she not know what he was talking about? And how could she not believe the news he was hearing when she already knew? She just reached out to him to let him know that she was in her third trimester. Again, her third trimester would be around December, February, March, around there. And after she gave birth, she would allow him to have the DNA test if he felt like one was necessary. As he cried, trying to spit out this new information to me, and that's also in my book, in my version, I cried trying to figure out how the hell I ended up with this man that could ruin two whole pregnancy. He didn't believe the child was his because he just didn't want it to be, but the truth is the condom broke and there was a possibility. I scream on top of my lungs, how the hell could a C break and you not tell me it? Why on earth is she just now letting you know about an alleged child weeks before her giving birth? I didn't know what to believe. Why is the two versions of the book and why do they contradict each other? So because of this, people are speculating the idea of She's trying to hide the fact that she knew about the pregnancy. And the reason why she's hiding the fact that she knew that she had the pregnancy is to hide the fact that her baby was a revenge baby. Does that even make sense? <laughs> yeah, some parts have been taken out. So how do I know this troll didn't take it out? Yeah, so it is very strange that they made out that they didn't know that Ashley was pregnant beforehand. All that that I just showed you guys is really strange. It really is. But this is the thing. It doesn't make sense. And the reason why it doesn't make sense to me is because, like, it is strange. And maybe it's to cover something else up. Who knows? She could just say, yes, she was pregnant. And later on, when me and Jeremy fixed our relationship and we got intimate, really, you know, our makeup sex was so good that i got pregnant like after watching her video it really does seem like it was an accident keeping it like that doesn't make it look like she did it because of ashley i don't think that's what was running in her head oh i better make it look this way so it makes it look like like it's just too stupid it's so stupid to me but you cannot deny the fact that it looks totally different and it's so untrue like she knew beforehand so i have just dm'd uh two girls that reviewed keisha's book and i have asked them to send me the book that they have because it was around the time when the book released from my understanding so once i have their books i'm going to be able to compare it with the that the youtuber commenter sent me i don't know if they're a troll or not but you know with an account like that kind of red flag i'm also gonna message her and ask her to send me her version of the book now if hers is the only one that's different and the other two girls that give me their book is the same as mine i'm gonna be very skeptical about how her version of the book is so different from the two people that I have. So, the burner account ended up showing me proof of purchase of the book, right? And it turned out after going through Danasia's forward email that the book that she had as well was the same as the person whoever was behind the burner account. So there are different versions of the book. The book that Keisha gave me was totally different to what that download link had. Seems as if from what you're saying that she knew pretty much about everything. She was all in the mix from the beginning, but she literally tried to stay back and she was not speaking up on anything. So if you had a problem with what was going on, if you had a problem with what was being said, you had a problem with what the relationship was, you've known for months and then you still constantly trying to go through her instead of going to the source. If you didn't want Jeremy having any type of thing to do with her, you should have went there me. You don't have to contact her. 
It was exactly what you should have been saying to her. She kept trying to tell you this by blocking your stupid ass. She don't owe you to say anything to you, girl. Say it to your man. But you feel like you had the cojones to do that type of shit with him because he's a child to you. When you put him in a car, you put the clothes that's on his back. When you do all this shit for a man, you felt like, oh, so I can also talk to the other girl and be in, no girl, you can't be in the mix like that because she's not your child, sweetie. Jeremy's your child. He is your next mouth to feed. Do not feed in her mouth. I've noticed there's this huge sugar mama narrative running around. Like Keisha is basically Jeremy's sugar mama. Jeremy's only staying with Keisha for her money. He really doesn't love her, which I'm assuming is what helps Paris come up with her conclusions. So because of this rumor that runs around, she forms her conclusions from those little rumors and lies that are across the internet. And it's funny, it's people like, they watch her vlogs, every single vlog, and they're like, yes, this represents her whole life. Yeah, nothing totally doesn't happen behind the scenes. Jeremy's never doing this, Jeremy's never doing that. So they literally judge off these vlogs, right? And they see presents that Keisha's buying Jeremy, all the other gifts that Jeremy gets. Oh, Keisha bought it. Like, there's these receipts, right, of letters. One of them is a letter that Keisha wrote to one of her friends and another one that Jeremy wrote to her. So Jeremy gave her a gift and this was a little letter, I guess, that he wrote for her and people are claiming these are the same handwriting and therefore, because it's the same handwriting, Keisha bought a gift for herself and made it look like it was Jeremy. Now that could be a case, but there's really no evidence to back it up and the evidence they have are the handwriting. And I'm like, bro, the handwritings look different. Like, can you not see the difference? What looks hella messy? So that that leads me to my next question that I wanted to ask was, this is something that's been going on and even Shanita has spoken on this before, about Keisha contacting people pretending to be Jeremy. Has she contacted you and posed as Jeremy through text or any type of platform? Yeah, it was, it was one time that I can definitely remember where it was after I had August already and um, Jeremy was just checking in to see what August was doing. And it was a little bit later, but you know, the baby was, a newborn at that time just checking in and i could tell by the response that i had got that it wasn't him speaking and yes that is true five in the morning from what i thought was him but the response and the verbiage i could tell it was definitely her we weren't even talking about a dna test because we had already said once the baby got here that we had a clear understanding what was going to happen but there is no evidence to say this happened more than once. And that was regarding when it came to the DNA test. Please, when I please, you chose to do your piece. So I will say mine. It's off the strength of you don't know who you're helping out when you speak and you tell your story, when you say what's going on, because women go through this every day. But she doesn't really go into her story. So for example, she doesn't talk about all the sneaky shit she was doing behind Keisha's back. As I've said it multiple times, I didn't care to bring this to the internet. Like I didn't, this is a situation that people go through every day. So what's so different about our situation versus what other people go through behind closed doors every day? Now on January the 13th, Jeremy ends up uploading a video defending himself, sharing his side of the story, which you guys have already seen in the previous episodes, but he also said, I wasn't even able to come bring him what he needed because of the attitude and the emotions of the mother. Because when somebody still wants you, it ain't even about to keep you. Yeah, I can hear it coming from my mouth in general. Like, look, I take care of my son. I do what I got to do for my son. A lot of shit my son got, I bought like a crib, clothes, food. I bought all that and I can go pull out receipts for y'all. And I got some more shit over there in my studio closet for my son. I got all this shit for my son. Now, according to Paris and Ashley, those gifts were from Jeremy's brother. See, for imagine one of the receipts was money to buy Christmas gifts um, by his brother. So he wasn't doing all the contributing. All those gifts, you were provided with that money from your brother to, to put that in. You showing cartfuls of toys to your that your brother gave you money for to get. You're showing videos of a couple of things, you know, a couple of times that you brought over a formula. I can't even get it to him because for one, I'm always blocked, so I have no chance to even talk to him or to do nothing. Like so, this shit just sitting over here, just like when I had bought him the food, just sitting in my car for literally two weeks straight because I was blocked and I ain't had no way to talk. I'm trying to take care of my son, and it's it's kind of hard when a woman don't want to let you take care of what the hell you got to take care of. They feel like they got to dictate shit. Again, the childish blocking, but I just feel like there's always ways to give 
something to your child. It's definitely unfair that Jeremy during this time couldn't see his son, but he's still able to provide. For example, if he can't give the food to Ashley, he can always cash up Ashley the amount that she needs to so she can go get milk because a lot of you guys even said that, you know, he can jump the gate and put the food. I would do that for my son. That is really dumb because you can get arrested doing that. And you know how much trouble you can get for doing that? Especially when there's cameras around and nosy neighbors who will probably tell on you. If I was him, I would have simply sent, instead of giving her the milk, I'll be like, oh, so how much is it today in CVS? Boom, send it to her. See, that's how much the milk is, the powder form, whatever you want to call it. Go purchase that. Oh, you need this? Here, give me the receipt and I'll send you how much it is. There's always ways to do it. Later on in this video, he tries to prove that he's not a deadbeat and that he really does take care of his son. And he's showing all these receipts and stuff. But in my head, if you're gonna show receipts, show everything. Not just these little bits and pieces here and there. But at the end of the day, he doesn't even have to do it. It's just, it comes across so messy, the whole situation. And it just makes you think how sad, like he has to go on the internet and try to show, look, I'm not a deadbeat. But at the end of the day, I just feel like if someone called me a deadbeat dad and I knew I was taking care of my kid, would I really care to show it onto the internet? It's not like I have a career on YouTube because he's not on YouTube, you know? But I guess he's just trying to really show to everyone that Ashley is not a complete honest person, maybe. And if that's the case, then he should have shown more than what he just showed. Because if that was your receipts, you still didn't look like you were fully taking care of your son. Saying that, you have been away for three months, right? She'll block you three months at a time, etc. According to the internet, it only costs like twelve to 14000 for middle-income family to take care of a newborn. I'm like, that is so cheap. Well, not everyone that's cheap, but I'm just saying. When I looked at that, I was like, that's not a lot. Like, he could probably afford that. If he was to do a video every single day, he could take care of August's, like, experience. Expenses. So what he showed didn't really do anything. It's just a little thing here, little thing there, and then the rest you have to take his word for it. For my son, which I, I do regardless, but I do all this shit for my son, and I don't know what you doing for real, for real. But everything I know that I'm doing for my son, and you still don't even let me spend time with my son. Like my son only seen his sister twice. He been with his sister twice when she came over, and she dropped when she's work at night, so she's had to drop shit, and then she would just drop him off to me when she got to go to work. But the whole day she got him, and she want me to pay for the nanny, but I don't even get a chance to spend time with him, so I'm just spending all the money. That nanny thing was so weird. Ashley was so like it was like it's my way or the highway or i'm never talking to you again just send me money for the nanny and there's some things about that nanny actually let me see if i got it so basically there was a live stream right and apparently that money was going to be paid to hazel's mom because she was looking after august right but apparently hazel's mom was looking after august for free mink mob d says Stop lying on Ashley. Your mama said Ashley offered money. Lol. Girl, you throwing Ashley under the bus and your mama, dumb A, ain't even backing you up. I can't. That's sad. And then in the comments, if you look real closely, it says she did, baby. She offered, but I turned it down. So, so I think that people are thinking like, why would she need money for a babysitter then if she has Hazel's mother? But it's a possibility that maybe her mother isn't available all the time. There could be a lot of reasons why she can't have Hazel mothers as a babysitter. Thus, she needs a new babysitter and she has to pay another babysitter to do it. But saying that as a man, Jeremy is offering a leaf and he's like, oh, well, we got a, a nanny here. I completely understand him not wanting to pay so much money, but he can't even, you know, spend the time that he wants with his son or ask when he when his son can come over, like... There's no, like, share or fairness here. Because if you're that scared to give it to Jeremy, are you not scared to give it to some babysitter? She was just so pressed about the babysitter. And I feel a lot of people are speculating due to those circumstances that she was trying to finesse Jeremy for some money. 
And I don't even get a chance to spend time with my son. It's just like, don't get me wrong, I'm gonna always do no matter what, but I'm not gonna be used either. The way I feel, like, shout to treat me like, that's not even my little boy. And da 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 and whenever he ain't woo that shit, nigga ain't talking to you like, that's how she treat me. Like, that's how she be trying to goddamn handle me. Try to block me two, three months, great. And I ain't even get a chance to like, See nothing about my son. All my son milestones, I've never had a part of. His first words is be the one go out my way to come all the way to her house from where I live at. Whatever I got to break, whatever I got to do in my day, cause my son is more important just to see my son when he got a whole daddy, another family that you could just drop him off and he could spend time with his other family. And I do believe Ashley tried to build comfortability with Jeremy. I just find it so strange that she had no problem dropping him while she had to go to work. But when it came time for August to stay over there or spend the weekend, etc., she felt really uncomfortable with that idea. Like, it's like, what's the difference? And I believe the difference is, is that Jeremy has to go to work, right? He has to go in the studio, do his thing. And the person that's left to look after August is Keisha and Keisha's mother. So I think that's the issue. She clearly doesn't like Keisha, but Keisha is a part of Jeremy's life and she just wants Jeremy to have the child and that's it and not Keisha because Keisha is just a girlfriend, right? Not realizing that this isn't just his girlfriend. This is his partner, someone that he's been in his life for a long time, someone that he lives with. So I feel like maybe that's something that she would have to get used to if August is going to stay over with Jeremy for like the weekend or for the week. And hopefully maybe later on down the track it changes and she feels more comfortable. But due to all this drama, I don't know if that's ever gonna happen. Going off with somebody else said who ain't even had the right intentions even to make my son. Because if you did and you was a real woman about what's going on, then you wouldn't even try to pursue me. Even if I tried to pursue you, you would cut that shit out like nah, but you got a whole situation. This really doesn't help his case, especially if she's not a real woman. Because he's not a real man either. He betrayed and went behind Keisha's back with Ashley. And plus, you used to f with my best friend. I used to f her best friend for real, for real. And she backed on her and to come f with me. And I'm just being real at this point. Shotty had a motive this whole time. I was stupid and dumb and foolish. Never happened, it happened. You doing all this because ultimately you thought you was going to end up being with me or some shit. It is very difficult to prove if Ashley got pregnant for a motive. Very coincidental for her to have a child, but not to have a child to, to trap you. And Shadi getting on here and trying to get some clout and some fame off of some shit that she know down where has been a lie from the jump. Yes, I kept with Shadi. Like, I ain't gonna take that away, yeah. I kept doubling back and tripling back. Yeah, I did. With That was my own demons, my own faults or whatever I had going on. She knew what the f was going on too with my family. You gotta understand, Shadi my whole life. No, let me get it. I in my own life. But Shadi played a part knowing she f***ed the whole family for real, for real. And that could be the case of her trying to separate the family. Just the fact that she was still seducing Jeremy and sending things and she never denied it. She was like, you don't think I get those things back? Implying that she sends things and she goes for it first. He also confirmed in this video that he never spoke bad on Keisha. I never in my life ever spoke bad about Keisha to no, no other woman or person in the world. All these rumors and all this other he say, she say about me saying that Keisha had an older and all this. Like, that shit is a lie. I'm with the girl every day. Like, I want to be with nobody for... And then he ends up apparently exposing Hazel. Burns ever fled a flock together. And if y'all think shot it on this type of time, the friend that she got with her, oh yeah, shout out on them too. Because the nigga that the whole married... Man, let me shut up, bro. But anyway. Now, Jade Fox end up making a video with some receipts. But again, this is something that I didn't work on. So I don't know how legit a lot of these things are. It is all a ledge, but it's funny how Jeremy said this way before Jade Fox ended up making her video with the receipts. Apparently, Hazel had a sugar daddy and she was trying to take the sugar daddy away from the, you know, his, his wife. You welcome this behavior. After Jeremy uploaded his video, there was a lot of comments that were made um, and the ones that he actually responded to. Now, I'm going to have some nice music in the background, so feel free to pause and read some of these comments.
Now, according to Paris, there was actually more in that video. The video, but a lot of you guys told me that he released a video that was 45 minutes long and then he clipped or somebody clipped out a huge portion of 15 minutes of the video and it was a bunch of shit talking on Ashley. Now, you can actually, for you guys that don't know, you can actually edit on YouTube. When you upload a video onto YouTube, you can go into YouTube Studio and edit from your actual YouTube and cut things out. So it is a possibility that this is true and that's it's something that he edited out. Ashley ended up making the receipt video, but she ended up taking it down. It's unfortunate that the video couldn't stay up. I mean, it could have, but like I told y'all, and I'm gonna stand on it, like I said, if it's not feeding my child, I can't, I can't. So, you know, the video I did was a timeline. Now, around the 27th to the 28th of January. It was a live made two days ago on the person who is the recipient of these receipts, her page. Brie ends up saying this on a live stream. That it was something sent to her from Miss Ma'am that was very disgusting. It will make you want to cry. She already put this into the, the universe. She wanted to be involved. Um, so she put it out on her platform to let everybody know that she was the one who received these, these receipts from this profile and it was so disgusting and so nasty whatever was said she is just so disgusted with the situation oh my god i cannot believe she said that so this is when she actually had the receipts some people have been trying to make out that it was earlier that she got on the receipts no it was around this time according to her according to the dates and the number of days from when she did that live the reckoning it was around that time they actually had the hold of all the receipts and the messages that Keisha sent to Bree. She wanted to get the receipts of the appropriate individual involved because it was oh so bad and oh so terrible. Some of the things I said, you might want to cry, you know? And as you guys know, these are the receipts where Keisha was talking down on Ashley, talking about Ashley's suicide, all the extra things that she shouldn't have not been talking about with Bree. What I said was, I was the mastermind behind the reckoning. And what that means is the title of the reckoning, that was me. I created the title. I figured what better way to title this shit than to call it the reckoning. Like literally you're facing your own music. You tried to say that you weren't out here being negative. You tried to say you didn't come to the internet first. You tried to say a lot of shit, but baby, the, the reckoning was putting the lies to rest. That's why we were dressed the way we were dressed. That's why it was set up the way it was set up. We, we tied your lies, we tied your bullshit, and we was ready to put it to rest and move on. So Hazel and Ashley decided to make the reckoning video. This video was full with some truths and some lies. It was maliciously done to really make Keisha look bad as possible, which I'm going to get into and show you guys with some proof. Now she gave timeline of events and situations, which I mentioned in the other previous episodes, but she also said, Best friend said it's a beautiful day. The birds are chirping. The sun is out. Perfect day to read a baby. You know, I really, really, really tried to keep it cute, y'all. I really did. And I played y'all's game for a while, and I'm, I'm, I'm not. We're going to play mine now. And go find someone else to play with. Play with your kids, play with your mammy, but don't play with me. It's been a lot, you know. As I've said before, there was a cease and desist and do what I have to do to take care of my child and keep it moving. And I was okay with, you know, being behind the scenes and playing my part. And it's just for me, I'm really irritated on how much Miss Ma'am wants to involve herself. When August is coming over asking, you know, can he stay over for a week? And it's like, I understand that she wants to be with him, you know, they're on off, whatever they are. But that doesn't mean that you're automatically a stepmother. It doesn't mean that you just get rights over my child. Like it, it's not, it's not going like that. And my problem with Miss Ma'am was the control. Now this narrative was pushed around a lot. The thing is, you even said that you wanted her to bond with the kid. You said you wanted to communicate with Keisha because Jeremy was being a bad communicator. And after that, Keisha only asked you maybe once or twice about your son meeting his sister. 
And after you ignored her, she never ended up messaging you again. So how is she obsessed and trying to control? And I could tell that she was enjoying that, like, you know, having to, to say so when August is coming over asking, you know, can he stay over for a week and this like, and I really tried to, you know, play their game for a while because, you know, I felt bad. I'm this woman who has a child with your man and, you know, I'm in your household. So I could imagine how she felt. Okay, cool. But don't act like I didn't try to be a bigger person. Don't act like I didn't try to be cordial. Don't act like I didn't try to befriend you and just welcome you in my life just as much as you were welcoming us into yours. Obviously, there's a big difference between trying and actually doing because she was still sending videos to Jeremy. She kept asking for pictures. She said she wanted to see him. She wanted to to enjoy him and blah, 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 blah. But he's a mistake, he's a hiccup, he's this, he's No, bad. what Bye. she is is obsessed with your son because she can't have boys. Yeah. That's yep. the obsession. Yep. Yep. She can't have a son, so she's obsessed with the one that you have. You don't have to say anything to her. As far as you're concerned, when he's in the care of his father, it's, that should be all that it is. But you keep interjecting yourself, you're making it hard for me to want him to be in the care of his father because you are acting obsessed and it's really crazy and you continuously lie that's what i'm upset about because why bring me into why speak on something to lie on it like because at the end of the day all i've done is own up to my part that i played and kept it moving honestly i was gonna block mr sir but we had a conversation and as always i'm trying to be the bigger person and try to find the common ground once he acts like he's ready to man up and do what he's supposed to do and said you know let's just start talking things out you always just get so upset and be ready to block a nigga but you don't ever ask me like what's going on even though i've said multiple times why can't you come to me and say hey look this is what we did today hey we recorded a video today yes it's called being an adult and not acting out on emotion which if she wasn't sleeping with jeremy and respecting his girlfriend and respecting her co-parenting, she would never be in this predicament. I just don't get it. Like, I I haven't said nothing. I worked that out. You didn't have to talk to her, but you did. You know, you, you sat down and talked to her because again. And I did that out of the kindness of my heart to help y'all's household yes, get back together. Yes. Again, another contradiction. She wasn't trying to help their household get back together. She was still being seductive and sending videos, photos, etc., to Jeremy. This is another contradiction because you're still seducing him and doing stuff afterwards. Okay, so you are making it seem on that last video like it was no. You miss your son. This is this is Cap with the word what everybody like to use around here. Cap. That's Cap at his. Ashley then talks about Keisha reaching out to Brie. Calling a person a side chick. Well, she was a side piece and so was Jeremy. Jeremy was also a side piece at a time when <laughs> Ashley had a girlfriend. Or, uh, what is she, what, what else, whatever little um, word that she's called to insinuate that she messed with somebody that was in a relationship. If, if calling August a hiccup or a mistake or a problem, and by the way, the problem, that message that you guys saw, the problem was not August. It was obviously Ashley. She's a permanent problem. A child is not going to be a problem, man. If that's not spreading hate, then what is? What do you consider spreading hate? Uh -huh. She was already pregnant with the, the revenge baby, so she ain't have no choice. What do you consider spreading hate? SB, not that she looks slow. I think she is slow. What do you consider spreading hate? She can't believe her daughter just as dumb as she is. Right, period. I agree. Keisha should have never, ever reached out to Bree. This is something that could have easily been handled on the internet. To add things on, she then indicates that Keisha is sending long paragraphs about her son so it can match onto this obsessive narrative that she has paraded with Hazel. Tell her, like, listen, I don't need you speaking for Mr. Sir. I don't need you asking about his, like, my son's whereabouts and when and how long can he stay and, like, it, it's none of your business. Y'all, Yo, like, we were going back and forth, like, Going back and forth, honey. Like, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. It's crazy. I don't know if y'all missed it because I know it's a little low, but 
I think this way. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Y'all see? Y'all see? And why do you have so much to say? It's not your child. I didn't lay down with you with this child. Like, I didn't have this child with you. Like, please. Because those long messages were the messages that she sent to Ashley after the live stream her and Hazel were doing. It was nothing about her son. That's not your business to talk about. Just like the abortion. That's not your business to talk about, sweetie. How dare you? How dare you? Like, I'm grateful that this individual did not put this information out on her platform off of the strength of Miss Ma'am trying to get it out the way she was because that's not your business. I'm glad that she had a mind and, and could think for herself to see, like, that's not right. Then Ashley exaggerates that Jeremy is obsessed with her because he just happened to go to a club that she works at. I can't even enjoy my girl's trip to come back to find out this man, Mr. Sir, is popping up at my job. Like, come on, y'all. Like, at this point, y'all are obsessed with me. I'm running away from y'all, and y'all are obsessed with me. Like, at this point, can I get my ankles back? Because y'all just stepping on the back of my ankles. Like now, in this video as well, I don't know if you guys noticed, but Ashley fails to take proper accountability this is taking accountability hey guys like i'm not perfect either you know i made a promise to keisha to my my you know for our kids that i you know wouldn't be doing stuff with jeremy and i started sneaking behind with jeremy behind keisha's back and doing things you know after i promised to her that i wouldn't do it and I was doing it while I was being friendly with her, being nice to her. I really screwed up this whole co-parenting thing. That's how you own up to your ish. That's how you take accountability. Not, oh yeah, I made some mistakes too. Bye. Like, no, that's not how it works. So I keep on getting these messages, Ashley took accountability. I'm like, where? <laughs> where? I just watched this stream where someone pointed out. I don't have time to sit here and gossip and talk about he say, she say, baby. Everything I say can be proven. I was made aware in my Discord that the girls of LSA are not happy with you, honey. They're not happy with you after that. They already weren't happy with you, but now they didn't put the gears into overdrive and there has been a list created to um, make sure that every sponsor that you have is going to be withdrawing their support because it's no reason why companies should be supporting a foul creature like you.